The conservator she paid for Jamie Spears and Lou Taylor to go to Israel on a vacation where he got baptized in the River Jordan. Britney footed the bill for that. What are we talking about here? Jamie brought in TriStar Entertainment. Lou Taylor ran that. And Lou Taylor didn't really have a hold in entertainment until then. And Lou Taylor signed on with Britney as her business manager. Lou Taylor, her company, was getting 5% of what Britney made. And that was a fortune for years. And then all of a sudden, toward the end of the conservatorship, Britney's not making any money, really, because she's holed up in her house, right? Lou Taylor sends an email to Jamie saying, I want a minimum of $500,000 a year or the 5%, whichever is greater. When you get a percentage, you take the good with the bad. And she had plenty of good where she was making an absolute fortune. And when it's bad, you don't change the deal and say, I win, and when I lose, I win. Because that's what Lou Taylor wanted. And Jamie said, approve. In my opinion, that's just wrong. That's wrong. That should not have been done. And again, why where's is the, the judge, judge in this? Why is the judge approving all of this? Well, let and me tell you, it goes deeper. These lawyers, and there were a lot of them associated with this conservatorship, made millions and millions and millions of dollars over this 13-year period, an unbelievable amount of money. There were a lot of people making a fortune off of this conservatorship. And at a point, you know, yeah, Britney had issues, but a lot of people have issues and we're not in conservatorships. So how desperate was it? And I don't know the answer to that because I'm not a doctor and I haven't spoken to those doctors. Everything is what you hear, but... But even, even to keep it going, you could even see a, a scenario where that's fine as long as you're not making money off of her at the same time. A lot time. of money. Right. If you're just looking out for her well-being, for her mental health, uh, for her day-to-day -day life, then that's all right. But once you start making money off of her also, it compromises you because now, yeah, I'm supposed to be looking out for Britney and that's fine, but how do you ignore the fact that you're making so much money and that you turn the spigot off if you end the conservatorship? It's almost an inherent conflict when you have that kind of money on the line. Right? When someone is in a concern, not able to take care of themselves, they can't make any kind of business decisions or sound decisions because of mental issues or disabilities, yet she can run this huge, that also funds other people around her that work on the set. Now, you can't minimize her saying there were some real issues here, but everything gets clouded, right? To me, the reason this conservatorship is a failure is because Britney Spears was miserable. And if you have a conservatorship, you've got to figure out a way of not making the conservative feel miserable. And she felt miserable, and there was no relief from that. And I don't know if it was ignored or they didn't know how to deal with it, but whatever it was, if the conservative feels miserable, feels like they have no life, it's a failure. If half of the allegations that Britney has put down in court documents are true, it's not just a failure, it's abuse. But then it's like, how far will Jamie and his team go to keep Britney under control? And there was these allegations that came out that he had bugged her bedroom and staff had come out from Black Box, which was the security company, claiming that there was emails that were being sent that had approved for this device in her room to capture everything that she said and, and an what? iPad that would control her cell phone. The claims from the whistleblower, the former black box employee, were vetted by a former FBI forensic analyst and she deemed them highly credible. Yeah, I mean, it may be true. It may be true. Jamie has denied in legal docs that he authorized or even knew about any bugging in Britney's bedroom. It just shows you the length that people and her family would go to keep her under control, but also, in their minds, keep away anyone bad and going to influence of, her in, in a negative way. In fairness, way. there were a lot of bad people who were in life who destroyed part of it. I mean, you know, that's it, there is some history here. Okay, she has restrained three of her exes at this point. That says a lot. <laughs> Those are bad choices. This all boils back to her being a... The takeaway from it. And then there were other things I feel like she said because 
I don't want to say she was manipulative, but she knew. Oh, there are people on the conservatorship side who said she was just lying about a lot of this stuff. Right. And but this is coming to a head to... now because it's not over. And Jamie wants to take Britney's deposition to put all of this out, saying that she has annihilated him in public and he wants justice on that side. She wants to depose him. And open up all the books and see if there's any wrongdoings from all the billings that With he did Matt Rosengard years. by her side on that. The judge has now ruled that Jamie has to sit for a deposition. Brittany does not. So this is not over. You know the weird thing that I just can't figure out is Brittany said this in 2021 in June. Not long before that, during COVID, she was in Louisiana for more than a month with her family, and it seemed on the surface they were getting along great. I don't understand that. There was a lot of evidence that the family was in a good place. There was Jamie Spears at her kids' like soccer games, and then she went and quarantined with them in Louisiana. And But also since then, her relationship with Jamie Lynn has absolutely exploded as well, and they were together in Louisiana too. Jamie Lynn has always felt like she's lived in the shadow of her star sister, Britney Spears. Jamie Lynn came out with a book, um, and originally the book title was going to be I Must Confess, which was a Britney Spears lyric from Baby One More Time. But then a lot of backlash came with that because people felt like Jamie Lynn was really seizing the moment to come out with this book during the time when the Free Britney movement and you know the end of the conservatorship was all in the news. No, exploiting Britney. Exploiting Britney. And she eventually changed the name to Things I Should Have Said. But Britney was extremely upset about this, fired off cease and desist to her. Britney uh, said that she was not gonna be reading this book, that Jamie Lynn lies about everything that she's heard about when, when Jamie Lynn does press conferences. And Jamie Lynn came right back at Britney and said, I'm not lying. Exactly, and Jamie Lynn had said that she has a right to tell her own story, that this is her life too, not just Britney's. And, and by the way, and now Britney is gonna tell her story. Because right. uh, she's writing a memoir. In response, decided she's going to write her own memoir. Although she's writing it every day, it seems. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it'll come in separate posts. Right. But it also is, I think, to telling to Britney.